FTV once again. This is a beautiful day the Lord has made, and we rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you had a wonderful week. Today we have a very important subject to discuss. Have you ever thought about why you are here? Or has it ever occurred to you? Is there a reason why I'm here? Or is it just because I'm here? Today we are going to discuss that. And with me to discuss this is a very great man of God. Which some of us know and is still here today to help us discuss this more into details. So, welcome once again, Reverend. Thank you so much. And can you please tell our viewers who you are and a little about yourself? Thank you, Mavis. And thank you, uh, my view, our viewers, for listening to us, for tuning on to EMF TV. Again, I am Reverend Richard Johnson. I am a Liberian prelate, and I'm also living here in the U.S. And I'm proud to be discussing together with you this topic, why are you here on earth? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Viewers, before we go into details of the discussion, I want to remind you that this is EMF TV, and when we come your way, we want you to share our videos, comment, and suggest what you think. This is a discussion. It's just not the two of us. We want everybody to be part of it. And we want you to know Christ for yourself and to bring hope to the hopeless. So join in the conversation whilst we go. And we are going to put your part into it and we learn from you too. So, Pastor Richard, why are we here? Thank you. Thank you so much for asking this question. Why are we here? In order to answer that question, Mavis, and to you, my, our audience, we need to firstly reflect on who we are. To answer the question on why are we here or why are you here is to know who you are. In other words, that question is driven by divine inspiration and it's also driven by human response. It's divine inspiration because it goes back to God. It's human response because we are accountable and responsible to God onto that question. So thinking about who am I, mm -hmm. it goes beyond just identity. It goes beyond be being a black or a white, being a boy or girl, a woman or a man. It goes beyond what ethnicity you belong to. It goes beyond what country you belong to. It goes beyond citizenship. That's exactly what that question goes to. It goes beyond all of those. It goes beyond how much degree you got on your education. It goes beyond what fraternal connection you got in the world. It goes beyond how much a family is. It also goes beyond uh, what are the core beliefs in your culture. It goes beyond that. It's, there's something greater than that when you think about that particular question of who I am. When you read the book of Psalm 139, 14, it talks about we are wonderfully and fearfully made. And as I may say, we praise God. Yes. So we need to understand exactly that we are, we are faction, we are formed, we are created by God. And more so in the book of Genesis 2, it talks about we've been created in the image and the likeness of God. So think about the fact that you are not just a mere creature, but you are the only creature created in the image and the likeness of God. We may leave that conversation for another time when you talk about image and likeness of God. But you, you, you are the representative, you know, of God. Yes. You, you are the one exactly who represents God in the earth. So you are more the one who responds to God than anything else in the world. So everything else is held accountable through you to God. So you are wonderfully, and the psalmist said that, and yes. fearfully made, and we are God's children. Mm -hmm. So thinking first about who we are, you are a creature of God, and you are the person of God. Thank you. Thank you very much. So with that being said, we are here because God put us here. Right. Is it for a purpose or right. just because he wants us to be here? Thank you, Mavis. This <laughs> is very important. This is very significant. For those who are listening to us, this is very important. 
there are quite many of us who see people in our in community, in our family, in our environment, and just want to chase after them. Chase like you want to be like them. Yes. That's not what God has made you for. You got a unique purpose that drives your life. Mm -hmm. And your destiny is in the hands of God. Your destiny is not somebody else's destiny. Your destiny is not shipped after somebody. You are different from your mommy and your daddy, even though they gave birth to you. Mm -hmm. But there's something unique about you that is very different. You may be called to that same leadership position, but what you are doing there is distinctly different from what the other leader who occupied that same office has done. So as we talk more about that particular act of purpose, it's very important to understand. When you read Genesis 2.15, you know, it brings us to that particular point. And I want to, I want, uh, to just uh, uh, kind of uh, inspire all my readers to read with me Genesis uh, 2.15. And let's see what Genesis 2.15 says. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. So when you think about purpose, God wants us to ship this word. Okay. God has put us in the word. The purpose for being here is to make a change. So we are change agent okay. in the society in which we find ourselves. So therefore, audience, wherever you are in your family, in that church, in that community, in your clan, in your settlement, in your county, in your state, with that particular ethnicity, God has called you to be a change agent in our society and not do things like the way other people did it, but to do things very differently because you are called to be a change agent. Thank you, Mavis. Okay. So somebody is asking a question. Says, did God bring us here to worship him only? Mm. You've said about change, but sometimes we hear that God brought us here for us to worship him mm. and that if we don't worship him, he will bring up stones and other things to worship him. So right. somebody wants to know, did God bring us here just for that purpose? So when you read the book of Ecclesiastes okay. uh, and most of the, the poetry writings in the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, the wisdom and the literature writing like poetry, like Job, like Proverbs, like Song of Song, those books are wisdom driven. Yes. They are driven by instructions. Mm -hmm. It is important for people exactly who listen to us on today to understand that particular aspect. When you ask the question about uh, whether we are driven by that's a question again, maybe so you ask, I wanna hear. The, are we here just to worship? Right. Yeah. Worship is a very critical word. Yes. Worship comes from the root of the Greek that talk about worth and shit. Okay. When you think more about worship, many people will be traditionally positioned mm -hmm. to think that worship is only for the church building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I worship, if I preach, it means I worship. Yeah. If I sing in the choir, it means I worship. If I sweep the church, it means I worship. If I gave, it means I worship. What well, matters in the audience, don't get me wrong. Yes, that's worship. Yes. But worship goes beyond the four corner wall of the church. Okay. If we respond to the way and the will of God, mm -hmm. we are worshiping. Okay. Ecclesiastes said the conclusion of the whole matter. Worship is a very significant portion. All right? Mm -hmm. And you read the book of St. John. The Bible calls us to worship him in truth and in spirit. Yes. So worship exactly is a significant word. It's not to be taken lightly. But worship goes to our offices. It goes to our marketplaces. It goes to our workplaces. It goes to our community. It goes back to our ethnic groups. It goes back to our fraternity. It goes back to our friendship. It goes back to our marriages. It goes back to our relationship. Worship goes outside the church building. Okay. So the way we, we respond to God's will and God's will, we are worshiping. And that is very important. Okay. So when you ask that question exactly, it reminds me about who am I as a person? Okay. And what do I need to do with my purpose? So Philippians 3, 13 to 14, uh, Matthew kind of teaches us that. 
And this is why Paul said, I'm going to just Philippians. leave Philippians 3, 13 mm -hmm. to 14. Okay. And this is what it says. If you have a Bible, open it and let's read again. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the gold to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Okay. This scripture verse or these scripture verses point out a couple of things that are very important. Okay. Like your purpose is divine. Heaven war. I've been called heaven war. The other thing to talk about is that this writer Paul said, well, everything else behind me, but the purpose that God has called me to is before me. And we have to be very careful about that as we live our life. That look, to you, my audience, our audience, my brothers and our sisters, please, don't be carried away by people's emotions and people's successes in the environment. Understand that you are a unique creature created before God. And God wants you to walk in that particular way and will of your calling. The purpose exactly is your purpose. Live your purpose. So to Paul, every other thing was never necessary. What was necessary exactly was to forge ahead to the cross. To what God has called him to. So as we wrestle together with that today, we need to be very concerned, but in the same way careful, that we cannot conform to the practices around us. We cannot be overwhelmed by success of individuals around us. We have to understand that individually, God has placed something in us, and we've got to take it very serious and walk before God with that as well. Okay. So my next question will be, so um, it's everybody living a purpose. Do we all know this? And does everybody, is everybody able to live their purpose on this earth? Are they able to? Thank you, Mavis. That's a critical question. And in as much as we try to answer that question, we also do not want to be judgmental. Okay. And, but what we think about how people individually and collectively are fulfilling their purposes. purposes. Okay. But what we hope to offer is to put into place a dimension that people who may be going out of track can understand that we can live for life that is driven with a purpose. Okay. By this I mean that let's reflect back to scripture okay. and look at a few persons in scripture who believe that their purpose of living was individually different it was meant to be considered seriously. Okay. For example, mm -hmm. look at the life of Joshua. Mm -hmm. When Israel had just refused to recognize that God has led them out of captivity, where they were for 400 years, God led them out. When they came, instead of living up to the vow, they were serving idols or false God. But Joshua said, I don't know which God you were serving, but I for me and my house, we will serve, we will serve the Lord. Go back to Ruth. Ruth had lost her husband. So she had no alliance or no loyalty to her mother-in-law. She should go. Her mother-in-law said, go, you are free. But Ruth said, no, this thing is beyond just a husband. It's about responding to my humility. It's about understanding that we have to be able to care for one another besides having husband. So Ruth responded exactly to her mother-in-law and said, you treat me not to leave you alone. Your God shall be my God. Your people will be my people. Wherever you die, there too I shall be buried. We have to understand it. When Esther was at Rex in the king's palace in Susa, and her uncle gave her that message, she said, go back to him and let him know that all of Israel here should fast and pray for three days and three nights. I too will fast and pray. Yes. I will go to the king. And if I perish, let me perish. So we have to understand that individually we're going to take our purpose very serious. And your, your, your purpose being taken very serious uh, is because you need to fulfill that response of the way and the will of God.
Thank you very much. Thank you. So viewers, I hope we are really learning from this. I am. And we will want to take a short break and we'll be right with you. Don't go away. Stay with us. Welcome back, viewers, as we discuss, we continue with this discussion. So, um, Pastor, whilst you spoke, you said uh, we have different purposes uh, in this life. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question that has come up. Mm. Say I, I grew up in a particular community, mm. in a certain environment, mm. where we do things the same way mm -hmm. and we all think it's the way things should be done. Oh, yeah. Say I come from a family of doctors mm -hmm. and I want to become a doctor. Say mm -hmm. I come from a family of accountants where we have been successful. My family has been successful in that mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. So I want to, growing up, I want to be like that. How are we able to know that that our desire mm -hmm. conforms to what God's purpose for our life is. How are we able to? Right, right, right. And thank you, Mavis, for asking that question. Because society, cultures, family, institutions, community, they all got influence on us. Yes. Even the church, God, it, it has no exception as well. Mm -hmm. They want to tell you how you should live. They, they want to tell you exactly what you should be like. They also want to tell you exactly uh, how you can become more successful. Mm -hmm. But when you think about your purpose, uh, it, does it align with the way other people think or the way culture informs you or the way community provides it for you or the enlightenment that education uh, gave to you? Why that question is important for dialogue? I want to say to the viewers, that question is also important for divine response. Okay. This is very high. I mean, when I talk about very high, because we have to go back to scripture. Philippians 121 say, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. My thing is to firstly ask the question, Mavis, did God call me to be successful or did God call me to be great? No, God did not call me to be a famous person. He did not call me to be a popular person. But God called me to be a great person. Not all famous people are great, but great people are famous now. Yeah. So therefore, no, listen, do not allow... Your, your community to tell you what you can be but be inspired by what God has revealed to you that you can be and my thing is how do you know that and that's the question that Mavis is asking how do we know that yes. God has called us to this and the way to know that God has called us to this is to begin to also go back to the question who you are and also go back exactly to what God has called you to really be within that area and to know that it's a discern. You're going to discern for your gifting. What is, it that, what is it that you're good at doing? And you're good at doing well. And how do what God has gave you uplift the environment around you? Because sometimes we use our gifts to tear down. That cannot be God's gifts. It cannot be the purpose of God for your life as you become a change agent in society. What is very significant for you to understand is that your purpose should make change within the society. So as your, your, your purpose will make change in society, it always has to develop, to improve, to mature, and not to tear down or break apart. So my audience, uh, my brothers, my sisters, I want to challenge you to discern. And the way to understand it is to always go back to God to begin to ask God that question. As you walk, as you read your Bible, as you pray, God, what is it you call me to do? God, help me to understand it. God, help me to understand it. God, help me to understand it. And you can do what I am. Okay. So, when you are in your purpose, right. 
like we are saying it, it could be that community and society can move you to a place where that's not where God really mm, probably mm, wanted mm, you to mm, be mm, and then say mm. by divine mercies of God Wait. you realize that this is uh, what I want to be mm. maybe you've done this for so long mm. yes you have brought change Wait. but I want to know do you feel fulfilled if you are really doing your purpose do you, is there a fulfillment? Do you feel something within you? Because we just talked about discernment. Right. So when you discern and know that this is the path God wants me to go, mm. do you feel fulfilled? Is there something in you that makes you know that, yes, I'm on the right path? Right. Yeah. Mavis, that's a very significant question. The world right now has offered opportunities only for survival. Yeah. So people are striving to survive. And because they're striving to survive, you want to do things that other people are doing in order to be successful yes. in life. But is that really true what God has called you to do? That is the question. That is the question that we're all are wrestling with today. Yeah. And even all of us, my sisters and brothers, that's the question we're all are wrestling with. People wrestling with that question in church. They're wrestling with that question in society. They're wrestling with that question in our family. Is that what God has called you to do? I know many persons have told me that, well, uh, pastor, uh, well, uh, this is not what God has called me to do, or this is not what I feel doing, but I got to do it to pay my rent. I got to do it to take care of the family. I got to do it to make sure the children are in school. I got to do it to take care of my life. Mm -hmm. So we are, the award, I want the opportunity to offer. The word opportunity to offer, I mean the word offer opportunity for survival. Yes. But Mavis, no, that's, that's, that's not right. <laughs> because your life is not being fulfilled. You are, you are only struggling to survive. So you are operating on the falsehood. You're not becoming authentic of your own self. And that's all I can say. Okay. So when you're, when you're doing your purpose from what you said, mm -hmm. you feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. There's some fulfillment right. that makes you know that I am in my purpose. Right. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Look, as, as, when you think about what David said uh, of Mavis in the book of Psalms, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Think about that. Being, being in the palace of evil, I mean, being in the palace was having the greatest connection in the society to the of Mavis. You had the money, you had the power, you had the authority. You could do whatever you want to do. But all of the things were driven towards personal aggrandizement and mediocrity. Yes. But David said, hey, listen, that's not important. That is insignificant. The most important thing for me is to live in the house of God, even though the, in the temple will be a quiet and a lonely place, but I'd rather be there because there I will find peace. So it goes back exactly to your purpose being fulfilled. When you, when you have a purpose fulfilled, you realize you become great in your, I mean, great person, a great human being. All right, rather than becoming a successful human being. And that's what we're struggling with right now in society. Becoming successful and becoming great. Okay. Becoming fitful and becoming prosperous. So where do we find between us me in that dichotomy? Where do we find ourselves? I'd rather be fitful and great than to be successful and prosperous. Thank you very much. So my 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 next question would be, are we um can we our purpose be used negatively too because if we are agents of change I believe change should be positive but some change can be negative too as human as we are so can because we you talked about worship being through community to your marriages to education to anywhere you find yourself you are worshiping God in the way you present yourself in what you do in your workplace right, right. so can we use it negatively too our purpose can we use it negative to 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 kind of change negatively instead of what God meant it to be positive? Can is, is it possible? You are you 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 were very uh, you kind of asking that question. <laughs> we asked that question: uh, uh, Can our purpose be used negatively? That question is very important. Mm -hmm. Yes, audience, my brother and sister, you can use your purpose negatively. You can use a good purpose that God has given you, you can use it negatively. Okay. So go back, Matthew, I want to be a scripture pressing a Psalm 27, 4. 
The psalmist say, One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after. When you go down and say that I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Now, when you think about how is that psalmist using the purpose of life is to elevate, is to live within the realm of God. So people today are also using differently their, their purpose. God gave it something good to use. Mm -hmm. You use it to tear down and to break apart. You use it to destroy. Now, uh, go back to the gifts of Paul. Go back to the call of Paul. Before Paul was called on the rule of Damascus, mm -hmm. there's one thing that has still not changed in Paul's life was that purpose of influence. Yes. That purpose exactly of, of leading people. That purpose of communicating, you know, uh, uh, the message. Yes. But Paul used that particular purpose to have that particular purpose of the life to have destroyed people's life. He he asked the magistrate, he asked the authority to kill those who are calling on the name of Jesus. Yes. Until Paul got saved, Paul was killing people because they were calling God's name. So here we can use our purpose to truncate the life of other people. To destroy God's good will and intention for us in the community. And we got to be very conscious about that. Yes. Thinking about what God has called you to do. Thinking about those very significant gifts that God has put in you. It could be overwhelmed by influence. You can use that influence to destroy somebody. To stop somebody from getting a job. To stop somebody from improving their life. To stop somebody's child from being admitted uh, in a school or to, 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 to hold back the blessings you have from blessing somebody, from giving somebody else. You can use that purpose to undermine people's life. And then exactly that purpose becomes anti-God. Alright? It becomes anti-divine rather than, and, than, than pro-divine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is deep. Yes. So, viewers, we have to be careful how we use our purpose. Like he said. Paul had the purpose of influence and the ability to speak, but he used it negatively before he came to know Christ and used it positively. It's the same with us. God has given us all purposes, all giftings, all different kinds of things we can do. But are you using it purpose, uh, the purpose to change lives, to really fulfill life, to be a blessing? Or you just use it because you know how to do it, so you misuse it. Let's be cautious and be careful because the conversation is about why we are here and there is a reason. So let's be careful how we use these purposes so that in the end we will have a good account to give as to what we did with what God brought us here to do. My next question for you will be can the purpose God put in our lives, the giftings, in order to fulfill our purpose. Make us proud? Can it make people proud? To the extent that they think they are doing a favor using it to help? Can, can it make us that way? Thank you, Mavis. This is important. And I want to say to that question, yes. Okay. People get arrogant. They live in the scope of bigotry. And they become increasingly defiant to those that they need to become blessings to. And even to the God who blessed them. Yes. Yeah. But as you think more about the purpose which God has made you, it's to respond in humility and simplicity to Jesus Christ, to the God who's called you. Because how did Jesus respond to the purpose that God has given him? To save the entire world. Even on the cross, Matthew, what did he do? Did he, did he insult God? No. <laughs> I mean, did, did he blame God? Did he, did he tear God down? Did he say that, God, you are a wrong person? But Jesus obeyed the Father. Jesus was humble and Jesus was simple. Learning from this particular action of Jesus Christ, we should be able to respond in the humility and the simplicity of Jesus Christ 
to the will and the will of God for our lives. So please, I don't know what God has called you to do. You may be a doctor to save lives. You may be a preacher to proclaim God's word in your environment, in your community. You may even be a teacher and one of the brilliant teachers around the world. You may have been exactly one of the most favored child in the family. You may be the only family member who people take to higher esteem. But the question is, does God call you to abuse that and insult people and disrespect people and feel that that is a gift that you have earned rather than a purpose that God has driven within you? As you think about that question, think about the fact that everything you have to do should be accountable to God and to be responsive to God. Thank you very much. This is a lot we are learning today. So my viewers, I know you are learning a lot today. What I want to say to you today is taking home with us is that if God put something in you, if you have a gift, if you have an influence, if you are a little different that people look up to, don't be too proud and arrogant. Calm down. Because God has given you that so that you can be a blessing unto people. Don't step on people. God gave you that because he knew you can use it the right way. So don't misuse it. Don't abuse it like he said. Please, don't abuse it. Let us live a purpose-driven life here on earth. So, Pastor Richard, what would be your final words for our viewers? To all my sisters and my brothers who are listening to us through this conversation, the question of why I'm out on the year of me on earth for is a very significant question that deserves assessment, evaluation, and pondering on a daily basis. Remember that we have a purpose collectively and individually. But remember that that collective or individual purposes of our life, we need a need to conform to the will and the way of God. When you think about what government and what leadership and what people are doing around the world today, you wonder whether it's what God has been able to put in them. As a government, they go call you to destroy others. They go call you to deform and defame others. As individuals, has God given you a purpose to be a confusion in your community? Or has God given you a purpose to destroy others around you rather than building up? Think about those kind of questions. What has God called you to do? Stay remain the question with what am I on year for? That is important. Thank you, Madness. Thank you, Vera. Thank you for coming today. We really appreciate you and we are blessed, Reverend. We are really blessed. I believe you are blessed too. I want to take this opportunity to appreciate my husband, Mr. Evans Vamenta, who is behind the camera making all this happen and to our brother Dan Cook Martin of Bidnet in Ghana. He's doing a lot to help MF TV. We appreciate you a lot, brother. And to everybody who helps MF TV, anywhere you do, through your prayers, your suggestions, and anything you do to make MF TV a success. We really appreciate you. And to you, my viewers, I appreciate you all. I hope you come back again and watch us. God bless us all and I hope we have a wonderful week. Bye-bye and Merry Christmas.